message today. A virtuous cycle or a vicious cycle. I want to talk to you today about thinking, about positive and negative thinking. You might say, Gary, is this something you do? It's something I've never done. It's something I've never done in my whole ministry of years of preaching. I never spent much time talking about positive thinking. Ever. Probably because when I was a young preacher boy, I was very, very conservative. I'm still very conservative. However, there was a guy named Norman Vincent Peale and the, po the power of positive thinking and, and uh, you know, Robert Schuller and people like that who they had a good message, but at times it was like, where's the blood and where's the cross and where's salvation? And, and so my, my form of thinking, the universities I went to and what have you, they would like, uh, they would sort of, you know, not even promote positive thinking. And that's sort of stupid when you look back. Amen. Are you hearing me say? Sure. And I'm just being honest with you. I'm just trying to say what has helped me in my life to think more positively is my pain. Pain, struggle, fighting that battle, having others come along. And when I was feeling alone or like I didn't matter, have other people pour into my life, man, you're alive. God loves you. Just because I'm the preacher doesn't mean I do it right all the time. And my mind was not a good place when I was going through a lot of struggles in my life, you know, over the last three or four years. And even with this recent surgery and back surgery in June that was very serious, then another one in December, you kidding me? It's easy to go back into a dark place. Are you hearing me or not? Okay, I know I'm just being honest up here and open, but I think if you think about it, you're not that much different than I am, okay? That's how I like to try to preach, okay? We're all sinners, is that right? Say, we all struggle some, but we can do better. We can do better, and I can do better. And that's where this message is coming from today. It's coming out of my heart. It's coming out of my life. It's really about, about my journey, and I'm just trying to help today, okay? So I'm talking into a mirror today is what I'm doing, amen? So let's go with it. A virtuous cycle or a vicious cycle. This is an incredible scripture. You ought to memorize this scripture. I know it's long, but you can, it's easy to, to get it down. You just get a big part of it, you'll be better off, Amen? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? True, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any, and if there be any, think on these what? Now this verse can mean a whole lot, but I'm going to tell you right now, one thing we can see from this verse is, do you see any negative there? Say, think about how bad you got it. Think about your, your boss man. Think about this. Think about that. Think about how you ain't got no money. Think about, do you see, do you see that in there or not? Guys, and we know the best thoughts we can get is God's thoughts and from His Word. I know that absolutely flat out but a lot of times there's other things we can think that are good and true and honest and just and we'd help ourselves if we would think this way you listening or not it's a big deal man big 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 deal by the way this verse is in my office been there for years and uh, it was given me years ago because of how much stress I seem to be under over the years stress 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 it's like a snake and he's stretched out <laughs> And this verse about thinking. <laughs> so, let's, let's just move with the message pretty quick now. Focus on good things or focus on what? It's up to you. This is a message today on thinking. Positive or negative. It's up to you and me what we do. Choose to count blessings. Look at that. Look at this. Look at that. Hey, man, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Or choose to what? Poor old me picked on. Look how bad I got it. Is that what that verse said? No. It's my choice, guys, on the way I'm going to think. I mean, I know many of you have had hard lives. You've had hard situations. I mean, from abuse to abandonment to, to a lot of pain. But guys, at the end of the day, it's not very healthy for you and it's not God's will for you to keep focusing on that. Today is a gift from God. Every day, every new day is, is, a, is a gift, and it's the grace of God that we get a new day. Amen? A new beginning. So I want to talk about that today, thinking. Now here's what God says. We've been saying it in this little series on thinking over the last three or four weeks that I've been with you. 
Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. And this is true right now, guys. I have set before you life and death. Life and death. Blessing and what? Therefore do what? Choose what? That you and your seed may live. Guys, you want to focus on the negative, you're going to be unhealthy. You want to focus on the negative, you're going to have a pretty crappy home environment. Is that true or false? Am I just making this up up here? Say. You know it's true. You go to work and choose to complain. Complain, complain. I'm going to tell you eight hours is going to feel like 16. Amen. Say. Come on, this is good for all of us, guys. This is good stuff for us. Now, this is something I've said for years when it comes to studying your Bible. When common sense makes sense, seek no other sense. Say that with me. When common sense makes sense, seek no other sense. People want to argue the Bible. But what does it really mean? Well, what did it say, fool? I mean, that's how I want to respond sometimes. When it says what it says, why would you? Come on. I know there's deeper meanings and all that, but guys, that ain't, that ain't our problem. Come on. When common sense makes sense, don't seek no other sense. Does that make any sense? <laughs> but now listen to me. Think about that statement about positive and negative thinking. What's more common sense here, to think positive or to think negative? What would the man just, he ain't got no big fancy education, but he's smiling and he's whistling. What would he tell you? He'd tell you, common sense son tells me you're going to do better if you think on the positive things instead of the negative things. You think that's the truth? Say. Let's look at it. Here we go. Focusing on the positive things causes me to do what? Look for more what? I hope I'm not boring you to tears here today. I'm trying to help you. But you've got to focus on the positive things. And when you do, you're going to find more positive things. Okay? It's like going to the beach and looking for shark's teeth. If you go to the beach, I'm going to the beach and I'm going to find some shark's teeth. And you get all preoccupied with all the shells and everything. You ain't going to find no shark's teeth. When you're looking for shark's teeth, you better be looking for shark's teeth. Because they're little. And you have to get your eyeballs sort of situated. You go like... Oh my gosh. Or you can go crazy like a lot of people and get you these sand things and just dump, dig dirt up and you sit on the ground. Eight, you know, 75 years old. But whatever. Have at it. But the point is, I'm sorry. I know a lot of y'all do that. But anyway, <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm no different. I get sand fleas and, and fish with them. So here we go. The point is, you better be looking for shark's teeth. Because they're little. You don't find the guys like this but once in a blue, 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 blue moon. They're little. It's focusing. And that's the way it is with thinking. When I focus on positive, I'll find positive. Did you hear me or not? And don't think this is a message on just you doing it. No, we got all, we, Jesus says he's all in this message. You'll see, okay? Hang in. But look at the same thing. Focusing on negative things causes me to look for what? If you want to find the negative in Gary today, you've already got a basket load probably just from walking in the back door today look at his hair he ain't got none <laughs> look at his shirt he don't have a tie on look at him with this girdle thing on trying to look all buff and everything <laughs> the jeans look good though but no I'm just kidding just kidding just kidding the point is you know we can think negative about anything can't we we can think negative about that young man with that toboggan on look at you see your toboggan see that you know what son I like your hat. You look good. You know why? Because I choose to say that. You got me? Instead of punching you later. Just playing with you anyway. Come on, here we go. Do I want more joy, encouragement, and gratitude? Or do I want more discontentment, discouragement, and dissatisfaction? You're going to get it, what you're looking for. Now, don't forget, this is a message to me today. Okay? At a minimum, this is scientific facts. You can check them out yourself. And I put the minimum up here. At a minimum, we have a, about 50,000 thoughts a day. 
50,000 thoughts a day, 35 a minute, at least 2,000 an hour. And your head is working even while you're sleeping. It is crazy. Yeah, I know it's crazy, ain't it? That's why you wake up tired. How many sometimes you go to bed and you wake up tired? <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's me sometimes. Here we go. But now listen, if you have 50,000 thoughts a day, there's some multiplication going on. And thoughts are going to multiply for the good or they're going to multiply for the what? They are, guys. How many, if you, when, you, when you found yourself doing it, you focus on negative, and you can find a ton of negative. Let me see your hand. See? Focus on positive, you can find positive. It's more work, though, to do this one, ain't it? Say. That negative, I can focus on negative. Oh, there it just come. There be another one. There be another one. There be another one. Focus on positive. A little more work. Happier, though, right? Sure. Now, when I have a care less attitude, when I have a I could care less attitude, then my thoughts are what? They're careless. And I miss the many blessings, and I miss the peace, and I miss the joy that could be mine right now today. Amen? So that's what we're talking about. I know you think I've turned into a psychologist. I'm not going to talk like this forever, okay? We'll, we'll be doing something different now, so don't, 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 don't count me out yet. 90% of our thoughts today are repeats from the what? That's science telling us. Okay? Guys, if you want to change your stinking thinking, it's going to be up to you. Now, God's there to help you in the Holy Spirit and the Word of the living God. But you're going to have to make the call here. My past, even though 90% of my thoughts are past, that's because that's the way I am. I just have a careless attitude. I'm not thinking. I'm not taking charge of my thinking. So I just let random and reactive thoughts be the way I live my life. But my past does not have to determine my future. But my thoughts, what? Do. What do I mean by that? Guys, if you have been hurt, if you have been abused, you've been abandoned, whatever it might be in your life, been treated horribly, that, I'm not saying that didn't happen. It did happen. And God knows it happened. But God loves you. Amen. That is not God's plan for your life to live the rest of your life under that and being controlled by that. Did you hear me? I'm not saying you're not going to struggle with it. You probably have a struggle like I struggle. It's a struggle. But you can win. Say, I can win. One more time. I can win. I can win, man. I can do this. I can do this. Come on. So it's a virtuous cycle or it's a vicious cycle in my mind. Something's going on up there. 2 Corinthians 10 says this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To change our thinking, we need Him. We need Him. We need His Word. We need His Spirit. We need His power. But we have that. We can do this. But we have to make that decision. And it takes effort. It takes effort. Casting down what? Imaginations. How many of your imagination just screws you up sometimes? Can I see you? And our imagination isn't always just about filthy things. It's more than anything, our imagination sometimes is just we, we make things up because of what's happened in our past. We assume it's happening again or they're going to do this or it's going to be the same way next time or if I get this other job, they'll treat me just the same. You see what I'm saying? Say, come on. Casting down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God's Word. What's true? What God says is true. Bringing into what? Help me now. Bringing into what? Captivity. Every what? You're kidding me. 50,000 thoughts a day and you're telling me I've got to bring them all into captivity? Yeah. But remember, 90% of them are repeats from your past. So if you can start to live in the now and live today, you're going to really, really, really you know, have a leg up on this battle. Plus, God, you know, obviously His Word and His Spirit is there to help you. And bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of who? And having in a what? Readiness to revenge. All what? All disobedience to your obedience is fulfilled. And we could talk about a lot, maybe what this scripture is saying. But you know what? It's just disobedient for you to be negative. 
Did you hear me? For to think those bad thoughts and to think that way and to think that's the way life's always going to be and this is just who I am and I can't do any better. I'm no good. I'm not loved. I don't matter. Contrary to popular opinion, whatever you might think, you haven't been called to be an inspector out there and point out all the negative in people's lives. Amen. Say, come on, that's not the will of God. That's disobedient. To come in here this morning, I'm just going to be ugly. Come in here this morning and not like the preacher, to not like the music, or to not like this, or we don't do it like the dead back yonder. You know what? That's not the will of God for your life. Did you hear me say? The will of your, God for your life is to be thankful when you come to this campus. And to walk in and have and somebody to serve you there and somebody to be here and miss Karen playing over there. That's the will of God for our life is to be grateful. And it, is that true, yes or no? Sure. Okay. So look, this is on us, guys. Come on. Now, a few thoughts about negative thinking. Negative thinking, say it with me, is what? And it's what? You ever seen anybody get better by just being negative? Usually your health goes down to tubes. When you're just negative, and they even tell you in the hospital. I mean, they try to create their good spirit, a good environment. You know, they try to help you. You know, no, you're not better. No, you're not better today, but you're a little better. Amen, say. Why not think about the little instead of the long way you got to go? Amen. Come on, it's just not, it's not healthy to think negatively in your life. And also, it's un what? It's ungodly. It's ungodly to be a negative person, to think negative, to talk negative. And guys, who is this talking to? This is the pot calling the kettle black on stage today. When they hear this on radio, especially people that don't like me, go, I don't know who he's talking to. <laughs> I'm learning. Amen? I'm learning. It's not godly, Gary. To just look at the problems and not see the blessing. Amen. Say. It's not right for me to look at that building and go, oh my God, will it ever get done? When I can look at it and go, oh my God, look how much is done. Amen. Say. Things I struggle with. Most negative thinking is a bunch of what? And it don't hold water. That's how I talk. It don't hold water. Most negative thinking is a bunch of lies. For example, to say you're not loved, that's a lie. I am not loved. I've said it about myself. I'm just not loved. That's pathetic, but I've done it. Okay? All right? It's a lie. Does God love me? Yes or no? Did God give His Son for us? Yes or no? Amen. And by the way, you might say, well, nobody else loves me because we're always good to go ahead and get, stay more negative if we want to be. Amen? But you know, everything that we do here at Fellowship Church on Sunday morning is out of love. Most anybody that does anything here doesn't get one red cent to do what they do. They do it because they love you. Can we thank the Lord for that? Come on, that's a good thing. Come on. You're loved, man. It's just not true. It's just not true. And by the way, I've learned now in my life how to go on the on the attack when that negative happens a lot of times you know it can happen and more in the past and the present thank god but you know it happens in the dark time and the long time late at night how many would agree with that can i see your hands few of you and you learn you have to learn how to fight you have to fight back and if you don't know what i'm talking about today well then you just need to thank god that you don't know what i'm talking about okay because it is hard it is hard it could be a number of reasons that causes it but nonetheless it's vicious it is vicious that attack and you have to learn to fight back. And I've done it before. Many times where I have to quote out loud that God loves me. And that's why I love the scriptures. And I can quote scripture. I might look like a lunatic. A lot of times I'd say it out loud. But certainly I'd just repeat it in my mind. And I would refute the negative and the, and the darkness that's coming. And I would refute that. And I would start naming names. And I'd, I'd often start with my daughter. Elise loves me. And it's amazing how that would bring, you hear me? And then many times I've fight, fought that battle, guys, and I've named your name. I've seen your faces and the things that you've, you've shown me in my life. And, I would, and that's how I fight back. Is that goofy or what? Because it's a bunch of lies when you examine it. Number three, negative thinking corrupts the what? It corrupts the brain. What do you mean, Clark? 
It results in stress. Is that true? If you want to have a good day and focus on a good day, you're probably going to have a better day. You want to be negative? It's probably going to be a pretty stressful day. Okay? I'm not trying to stick your head in the sand. You've got to deal with life and deal with issues. But it also leads to moodiness, irritability, and it leads to what? Depression. That's what it does, guys. We can pretend it doesn't happen, but it happens. You're listening today. Okay? So, oh, it's just my language up here on the screen. Can you say that loud? It just ain't. Can we say it louder? Come on. It just ain't right. It just ain't right. It just ain't. Uh oh. I didn't hurt my back. I caught myself. It just ain't right. To be negative and to focus like that and to bring the stress into your life and the discouragement, the discontentment, it just ain't right for the child of the living God. It ain't right for anybody living on the planet, but especially us who name the name of Jesus. Amen? Come on. So, a vicious cycle, a virtuous cycle or a vicious cycle, and here's just some fighting back. Here we go. Here's just some fighting back. Right from the Scriptures. Here we go. Here we go. It just ain't right. Why? Because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible says, I'll praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows what? Right? Well, it's not right to think this way. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am made, created in the image and likeness of God. God made me. God made you. So God created man in his own what? In his own image created he him. Male and female created he them. We're made in the image and likeness of God. We've been designed, we've been engineered by who? By God Himself. You cannot have a better engineer or better designer. So you're complaining, oh, look at me. I'm nobody. I'm a nothing. I don't matter. I can't make it. What you're saying is, God, you did a lousy job. You're really a crappy engineer. You don't know what you're doing. Who are you talking to, God says? I made you like me. Did you hear me? What's up with that? And the Lord God formed man. Out of the dust of the ground, he breathed in his nostrils the what? The breath of life, the breath that you have comes from him. And you're nothing and you have to be negative the rest of your life? That's crazy. Come on. We can do better. We've been made to what? And not fail. God, God made us to succeed. He didn't make us where we couldn't do, where we couldn't make it, where we couldn't overcome. We didn't design us like that. That's not the way we're made. God blessed them. God said unto them, now you go be fruitful. They didn't even know what they're doing. Multiply. What? Replenish the earth. Babies? What's that? Subdue it, man. Have dominion. Over the fish, over the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that creeps upon the earth. We've been made to do what? Succeed, guys. Animals didn't make the computers. They don't design our buildings, do they? Yes or no? Man, man, God has designed us to succeed. He wants you to make it. God calls us to what? Faith, not what? The only time you see fear in the Bible, when God's saying you should fear, is when he's talking about fearing him. And that word means respecting him, honoring him, reverencing him, being awe of him. God's not called us to live a life of fear. We're not even to fear the adversary. We're to be aware of him. We're to fight him. But we're to have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. You can think better. You can have a better life. You can, you can have faith. And it will take you incredible places. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of those that diligently that work real hard at it and really try to do what? Seek him. We're, co we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the what? The sin that does so easily beset us, which so often that sin is a lack of faith. It's fear. It's not believing. And let us run with patience the race that's set before us and do this. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and now he's set down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is what he's called us to. 
Y'all, am I killing you today? Say, he's just trying to really get me positive, and I'm hating it. <sighs> You're supposed to go to church and really feel miserable. We'd like for you to not feel miserable when you come here. Isn't that okay? Say, maybe learn and leave a little bit better than you came. When you stop and think about it, now you want you think about this statement, especially you theologians, you deep thinkers out there. When you stop and think about it, God is positive about everything except one thing. God's positive about everything except one thing. You know what the one thing is? Sin. God's positive. I mean, he's tickled to death he made you. Amen? He loves you. But he's really negative on sin. It's the one thing, the one thing that God's really negative about that he actually what? He hates sin, but guess what? He what? He handled it himself. The one thing that he's negative on, when you see God in his word, it looks like, wow, God's really angry. Yeah, sin, 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 sin. But guess what he did? He said, they sure can't handle it. I mean, I created them in my image and my likeness, but they sure ain't me. On the job not very long, already sinned and fallen. I'll have to handle it. The thing I hate, they can't handle. And I'm going to handle it. And guess what he did? God gave his son Jesus to be what? To be what? He gave His Son to be the thing that He hates for us. Look at this scripture. For He hath made Him to be what? Sin for us who knew no sin that we might be what? Made the what? Righteousness of God in Him. Isn't that great? Say, yeah, praise the Lord, you ought to. Man. Man, that's why when you hear verses, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Yes, yeah, through Him. You don't have to be the way you've always been, man. Look, Jesus took our sin upon Him. He took our sin, became sin, took our sin on Him, and then He took it and He did what with it? Nailed it to the cross. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against who? Us. Which was contrary to us. And He took it out of the what? And did what with it? He nailed it. Can you say nailed it? Can you say he nailed it? Come on. He nailed it. Remember that when you go into your dark thinking. He nailed it. You listening? If you want to get into a fight at home, say that to the one going into negative thinking. He nailed it. And you're probably going to get nailed upside the head. Come on. When we confess our sins, the thing that He hates, when we confess our sins, He tells us in the Scriptures that He will forgive our sins. Look at it. If we confess our sins, He is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all? Are you hearing that our excuse making isn't flying? Say, it looks like He has really given us more than a fighting chance here. You hearing me? Come on. Jesus forever not only took our sin, nailed it to the cross, He'll forgive us when we sin, when we confess, but He forever lives to make what? Intercession for us. You have a lawyer, the advocate with the Father, at the right hand, whoever lives to make your case. Wherefore, He is able to save them to the other, uttermost that come to God by Him, seeing He ever lives to do what? Make intercession for us. That's Jesus. I know, it's such bad news, isn't it? Here we go. Can you say that loud? God what? Yeah. One more time. God, yeah. the one thing he hates, he handled so that we could live. Isn't that awesome? Let's say it out loud. I forgot. I got all this, Roger. Here we go. God handled it. Say it with me. So we could be 
Help me. So we could be. 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 So we could be more than conquerors, the Bible says. Oh, I love this one. I could put scriptures with everyone. Don't have time. So we could be called the what? I had to put these scriptures though. You mean he calls me son? Yeah. He does. That's crazy, isn't it? Well, I can't handle it, Dad. I don't even think you could think like that if you think of it being his son. I don't think you could even start to be negative as much as you do if you just start talking like that. When a situation happens, go, I can't handle it, Dad. And you turn your face towards his, and I believe you're going, I believe we can handle it. You hearing me? Come on. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the what? Therefore the world knows us not because it knew Him not. Beloved, now are we the what? Sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, we know, that's our thinking. We know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. But we shall see Him as He would. And then this incredible verse. Talking about the second coming of Christ, but it's probably a little more power to this verse than we give. And that is every man that has this what? In him, he does what to himself? You start thinking this way. I'm a son of God. He loves me. I don't know. I can't predict the future, but I know one thing. His word is not a Ouija board. It's coming, to tr it's coming to pass. And one day, regardless of what this is right now, I'm going to be like him. I'm going to see him as he is. I'm his son. And I'm going to keep that thinking in me. I'm going to keep my head up. Amen. You hear it? Come on. A virtuous cycle or a vicious cycle. And we're going to close with just a, a quick run here. Here we go. We're running to the finish. One or two, it's up to you. Say that with me. One or two, it's up to you. One more time. One or two, it's up to you. And we'll switch it. Vicious cycle, virtuous cycle. Vicious cycle or virtuous cycle. One or two, it's up to you. One or two, it's up to you. It's not up to me. I can preach the word today. I can try to lift you. I can try to put the word in you. One or two, it's up to you. Vicious cycle. <laughs> virtuous cycle. Thank you, Lord. One or two, it's up to you. Let's go with the scripture. A scripture we know well. It says it all. The thief, Satan, comes not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. That's number one. That's vicious. He is vicious. Did you hear me? He is vicious. He doesn't come for any other reason than to eat your lunch. That's it. God hates sin. Satan hates you. Did you hear me? One or two, it's up to you. So the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's exactly where that negative thinking, dark thinking, it will destroy you. And your family, your church, your job, you think about it. Look at this one, though. The thief comes out, but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus speaking. Jesus talking. I am come that you might have what? And that you might have it more abundantly. Or that you might have a life that's full. A life that's overflowing. A life that's blessed. A life that's happy. One or two is up to you. Thief. Taker. Jesus. Savior. Giver. Well, I can't. Thief, then. Got it? Say. It's that simple, guys. Come on. Let's look at the Satan, the taker. Here we go. We're just going to list them up there. Here we go. Here we go. Got the scriptures, but I ain't going to say it a whole lot. Here we go. Satan, when you give into that, when you give into that, the thief, he's going to steal, he's going to kill, destroy, that negative, he's going to just take my head, that's where I'm at, a dark place. He's a taker. Adversary. Satan, that's his name, 52 times in the Bible. Slanderer, 35 times, devil in the Bible. King of death, 
ruler of darkness. This is what you're thinking. This is who you're putting into your head. Come on in the house, you tell him. Deceiver, wicked one, tempter, accuser of the brethren, liar, murderer, roaring lion. Come on in! Eat me. Is that what we want? I didn't know my thinking was so serious. Pretty serious, isn't it? Let's look at your option. One or two. Jesus, the giver. Put it in alphabetical order for you a little bit. Advocate. Bread. Captain. Deliverer. Emmanuel. Foundation. Guide. High Priest. Jehovah. King. Light. Mediator. Name above all names. Only begotten Son of God. Physician. Rock. Shepherd. Teacher. Vine. Way. Praise the Lord for Jesus. Yeah. Come on. It's a vicious cycle or virtuous cycle. One or two, it's up to you. I hate the pain you've gone through. Your stories are probably, and I know many of them, they're horrific. Guys, Satan wants to destroy you. Jesus wants to love you and help you. Amen? That's the message today. It's up to you, baby. Look at it. Look at it. Now look at this one right here. Put it over here. When you have this, you still have, you see that sort of shaded? This is not easy, guys. It's like when you go to a play. And you're at a, at a play. And the spotlight's shining on the stage. And you can see the scene over here to the right. And the black over here is just darked out over here. But you see people in costumes. They're black. You ever seen them at the play? They're dressed in black. And they're moving and they're setting up props and things like that. You know what I'm talking about or not? So you're at a play. You can look at the play. You can enjoy the scene. Wow, look, they're doing great. Or you can focus on the guys in black. And it can ruin the play. You hear me? I'm not saying as long as you're in the flesh, you're going to have the guys in black. You have to focus. If you put your guys on the guys in black, it's going to be a crappy play. Why are they doing that over there? Look at them. <laughs> and you're going to ruin it for other people. Keep your eye on the ball. Amen. You hearing me today? Little goofy. So even though he's all that, doesn't mean you're not going to still struggle with, with the devil. Oh, he's there. You keep your focus on him. Remember that. Rods, we've got to be close to being done here. One or two, are we? It's up to you. One or two, it's up to you. Say that with me. One or two, it's up to you. And help me just rush me on. Yeah, I wanted this scripture. It was a scripture that was preached a Sunday I got saved in 1977. I was in a country church. And the pastor didn't have any formal education, nothing. He worked at a cigarette factory in Carolina. Because that's what we Carolinians do and did. <laughs> we were known for our race and our cigarettes. But anyway. Oh, and moonshine. But we won't go there. <laughs> but he was an old-time preacher who got saved. And he started a church in Rockingham, North Carolina. And he just, and I want to bring him. Oh, God, help me. I would love to have him when, he, when we open up our building or have him here in the first couple of weeks and let this country preacher see. His labor was not in vain in the Lord. Amen? But he preached that Sunday and he banged on the pulpit. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open that door, I'll come into him and have supper with him. And my drunk mama believed that day, and so did this hell-raising boy. Amen? 
Where are you at today? He stands at your heart's door knocking. One or two, it's up to you. Would you let him in today? Say, would you let him in today? Praise the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for the word this morning. Amen. It's his word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m. and the main worship service begins at 10.30 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com. For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.